Yeah. Now, uh, obviously, the Bills, uh, football, sports in general has taken a back seat uh, to a, a series of mass shootings across the country. Obviously, you know, last week in Buffalo, 10 uh, black people killed, um, uh, targeted um, by a white supremacist uh, in a grocery store, of course. Um, and the Bills stepped up, being the, the, the part of the community, the fabric of the community that they are, of course, stepped up and responded. Uh, what have the Bills meant to the community? Uh, and, and we were talking about this yesterday, Ashley. It's like we didn't even get a chance to properly grieve and process that mass shooting before another one came. So kind of give us just a sense of, of, of what Buffalo has been like, uh, you know, since these racially motivated killings and how the Bills have tried their best to lead the way in, in the recovery and the healing and, and, and the progress, if you will. Yeah, I mean, I think for the Bills, they did take a little bit of a backlash in, in the beginning because I think people expected them to reach out quicker and do something quicker than what they did. But they were able to get everyone together and they came out to the east side on Jefferson Avenue where that um, shooting at Tops happened and fed the community. They were talking to fans and, you know, kids, giving hugs, having conversations. It really did seem like they cared. Um, they were there for about an hour and a half. They had different separate events to try and raise money for the families and, um, you know, the community and whatnot. Deion Dawkins, especially, which I will shout, shout him out. He's done a lot. He had a cornhole tournament. All that proceeds went to the families. He's having a kickball game that's coming in. I think the biggest thing right now is making sure that these guys stay consistent, that the organization stays consistent that they don't forget about these people on the east side because let's be clear the reason why this white supremacist targeted that neighborhood because it was it was property stripped it was all black people most of them as you see elder have to walk to the store the, the crazy thing about this shooting is that this is now a food desert once you took that store out these people no longer have a way to get food. They have no way to get to a store. The closest store after that becomes, you know, walking distance. You're talking about a half hour. So it's a lot. And you see that these, a lot of the people that he killed were, were elderly. So um, it's great that everyone is doing things now, but the main problem uh, and question that is going to be asked is how long is that going to continue when this is no longer the top store? And you see how quick another mass shooting happened right after that, even though it wasn't here. It's like we all all 10 of these victims aren't even buried yet before the next yeah. one happened. You get what I mean? So for here, I just think uh, the bills are doing what they can. I do believe that they, you know, they stepped out, stepped up. But the question is, you know, how quick, uh, how long are they going to continue to make sure that they're here for this community? Because these are people that don't get to go to their games. They can't afford bills tickets and to be able to go there so i think it was huge that they were able to go there and and feed them but i would hope to expect to see them in you know on the east side after that not just while it's yeah it's i don't want to call it a hot topic but news. why it's being no, I mean, exactly no. why it's yeah. front page news the question is longevity yeah. what are you going to do because no matter what people don't understand that store is not just oh clean it up and it opens back up no, it's closed down for a year. You got to take everything out of that store because you don't, you don't, you have no idea what's left, right? You, you have no, you can't save anything from that store. It'd be a bullet in a box of cereal for all you know, and then you try and resell it, something like that. So, you know, it's, it's a really sad time. Um, all 10 of those victims, great people that I know them all personally know, but uh, they were grocery shopping. It's ridiculous that you can't even grocery shop. And this person literally just put a zip code in and just wanted to get out of NYC because he knew he could not do whatever he wanted in New York City in those boroughs. And the first place that came up was Buffalo. And then from there, he came and he staked it out. He came a couple times prior to or a few people saw him because if you go to that neighborhood, that guy stuck out. It's very clear, you know, that he didn't belong there. There was no reason why he should have been there. And um, a few people talked to him as well so it's it's a very unfortunate thing and 10 innocent people lost their lives and don't forget the three other that are all going to be we don't know what type of ptsd they're going to have from this you know what i mean right. thank goodness that they were able to survive but just that neighborhood in general that's always going to be there there are black people here who are terrified who have had panic attacks going to get their groceries 
I personally have not went to the store yet because I just haven't been ready to do that. So my, me and my kids, my kids don't even leave the house at this point until I'm ready. That's not going to happen. It's pretty much work, the facility and home. Actually, I, I was, I was actually going to, going to go there with you because we played Dak Prescott earlier in the show saying, I, you know, I, I, it makes you scared to want to have kids. You just referenced earlier. You recently a couple of months ago gave birth to twins. So not just what's happened in your own backyard in Buffalo, but now seeing yet another mass shooting of babies of small children. You're, you're not quite at that stage yet, but you will be very shortly. How are you? For lack of a better phrase, how are you processing it? How are you handling the world around you that you just brought two beautiful and precious lives into? It's just crazy. I, I can't process it because I don't understand it. Because the first thing you say is like, oh, it's this, like the probability of this happening where I'm at is really small or whatever out of the entire world. But it's that one time where it's right here, right? Like the shooting in Buffalo was only eight minutes from the house. I always go to that top. So it, it's crazy that it becomes that close. And even though my kids aren't ready to go to school, there's still people that can very well go into a daycare and do that. There's very, there's people that, you know, they no could be with the nanny going to, to the store or whatever it is. It's definitely a terrifying thing because after that shooting here, there was also, you got to remember, a bunch of copycats that come after that. You get a bunch of idle threats and you don't know what's true and what's not. So instead of trying to guess it, I don't even try to do that, you know. And here at my station, there's only three black people on air. There's two and one Latino. And uh, that week and, and now has been extremely hard. You know, I've had people come with me to pump my gas. I have not gone to the store. Um it's, it's just tough. It's really tough. I mean, it, I went home and hugged my kids and I just cried because I'm like, man, as I didn't know what it was like to be a parent. But now that I do, you're just like, I don't ever want anything to happen to you. I mean, I just think if I was in a store, how would I get two six month old babies to be quiet? You know, I would almost have to suffocate them and run. How? You know, I have twins. So it's, it's definitely scary, but it's sad. It's stuff that we have to think about. I say, well, if I'm going to go to daycare or once I go to school, well, what's the security system look like? Well, what's the, what happens? We can't just get under our desk anymore. Like when they taught us in school. So it's, it's really a scary thing. And to know that you can be that targeted uh, going back to the Buffalo shooting for the color of your skin, for something you can't even control. Not that I would be anything else than what I am, but for something that you can't control and someone has that much hatred at 18 years old, it just doesn't make any sense. It's sick. It's disgusting. Um, I mean, I I usually don't go off on Twitter, but this has been the time where I felt okay to do so. And then you have those people that yeah. almost try to make sense of what this person did or make sense of, oh, the gun didn't do anything. Okay. All right. So it's absolutely frustrating at this time, and, you know, but I think at the same time, you also have people that care and want to do want to do for this community and uh and i'm sure for in, in texas as well which i learning the gun laws there and the, how this governor supports the things that are going on i mean i'd be terrified in the state yeah i mean you, you're right uh, you know ashley there was a there was a tweet from uh abbott in, in 2015 there was a story that texas was second in, to in, california in gun sales and he said it's embarrassing that we're not first I mean, like it was it's really incredible, but you know, you mentioned the schools and Mike, you know this too. This is something that didn't happen when we, we were growing up and we were growing up. It was like, okay, here's a fire drill. Uh, here's something you do right. every now and then now schools Natural are now a, a, they're, they're they're adapting to this. They have they have training in the event that something happens and they always send notes home to the parents saying it's unfortunate that we have to do this, but we do have to do this because it's just the environment that we live in. I was going to ask you and you I think you answered, you know, most of that uh, most of the question I was going to ask, but if there's anything you want to add about anecdotally things that you've observed about the community post tragedy. I know what the bills have done. I'm just saying like for in interactions that you've had maybe with colleagues or friends or family, you know, what have you seen? Have you seen a, a community coming together or or anything of that sort? 
I mean, I think you definitely see the community coming together. They call Buffalo the city of good neighbors. And I think people have been able to help other people out and lean on them. But I also think those there's also people that don't care, uh, not about the shooting, but necessarily what could be happening in that community because they don't live in that community, right? You, you don't want to wish bad on anyone, but that's obviously what happened. So, uh, but I think people have really came together. I mean, I, McDonald's has came out here and fed the community. Um, one of the bill chef has done so much packed like 750 meals a day for the community. I know groceries have been uh, out to the community and things like that. So it's been great. I mean, there's signs everywhere as you see what I tweeted out that, um, you know, Buffalo strong and things like that. So I think the community has really came together the best that they can to help you know, the neighborhood on Jefferson Avenue out for the situation that they're on, as well as the families, right? I think when you see these tragedies, tragedies, you know that they're not going to have to take care of everything, but there's also, again, there's an aftermath for everything. It's an emotional time, especially for Black people and uh, in this city and how difficult it is. And, you know, it's just, it's like, you just have to grieve, right? You have to, you have to move forward. And that's the scary thing is when these things happen, you nothing stops right you keep going and i think in news what is so difficult is you have to see it all day every day um you're worried about security and this and that just like we were talking about the schools and everything i mean if you think about it this man only did this in a matter of 45 seconds to a minute right that's how many people this person was able to kill and i don't know exactly how long the school shooting was but i imagine it wasn't that it was long over an hour. but these right Right, right. But these AR-15s are crazy. I mean, I know in Buffalo, right. they responded within minutes, especially because there's yeah. usually always police somewhere around there. It was funny. I was talking to someone and they literally said, look, like, you might get robbed out here, but you're not going to get shot. So, you know, to have had that happen and that many people pass away, you know, in that short amount of time. And I think really what messed me up is, you know, I saw the video and I, you know, it's definitely a sight that I wish I would have never seen yeah. um, or ever watched because it's the disregard I mean just I, I it's crazy it, it, it's really sick it's really disgusting and um I don't know I and then I don't you, know and then you see the the uh, the mayor of Uvalde got the nerve to call better work sick <laughs> he's sick exactly. for standing up for standing up for the victims and stand up to the governor and yet uh, and there was the a bunch of people under there saying like, oh, yeah. wow, wow, disgusting. Why would he do that at that time? It's, it's for the right. families. I think that person was standing up. He was standing up for for the families. So no, I don't no. understand how I, that would be an issue. And then it's great. I don't know. Some of these people just don't, they don't make any sense to me. And it, how you make sense of anything that has happened. Okay. Like, right. and everything is not mental I, health when it comes to the gun either. No. And I was, I was telling Michael earlier that, um, you know, part of me is tr like, even though it, we've seen mass school shootings before, whether it's Parkland mm -hmm. or Sandy Hook, it's like, well, why will this be different? And then it's like the default is like the pessimism that it will be different. That we just go around in circles and just go back to quote unquote normal again because we're so desensitized to it. But when you see, you know, stuff like the Miami Heat PA announcer saying, call your senators and vote like it just the reaction feels a little bit different. We'll see if it actually turns into change, but uh, but Ashley Holder, we appreciate you. Thank you so much yeah, for coming great. through. Uh, thanks for you know your testimony and uh, give our love to those twins. Um, Absolutely, I will. On the, They're on the bright the side, they go through movie. everything the same. On the bright side, they go every go through everything at the same time, so you kind of get it out the way. On the downside, yeah, it's you got something two. like that. But listen, they tire me out. Between, I, I don't know. Like I feel like I got what. Uh, female roster. Yeah, I got 55 kids. You know what I mean? I can't keep up with all of them. It's, it's I very like it. difficult. I like it. That's a, that's actually pretty good. That's a good segment <laughs> idea. 55 kids. 55 kids. Three man there roster and two twins at home. I like it. You know it. what? I'll, cre I'll create that. the show. I'll create the show and I'll have you guys. On. That sounds good. Take it easy. <laughs> hey, great, Ashley. I love you it. You too. Thank you. Hey, thanks for watching Brother From Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.